Like many young boys his age, seven-year-old Jackson Dunn Krause has many interests, and he loves hanging out with his twin sister. His parents say he is a funny kid and likes to laugh. This, despite his medical condition, Jackson has a rare, serious, and progressive genetic disorder that affects mostly boys. Jackson has Hunter syndrome. Our guest this morning, Dr. Barbara Burton, a professor of pediatrics at Northwestern University, and Dr. David Moulter, a professor of otolaryngology, Washington University School of Medicine at St. Louis. And we're going to meet Jackson and his mother a little bit later in the show. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Dr. Burton, let me start with you and let's talk about Hunter syndrome. What exactly is it? Hunter syndrome, also referred to as mucopolysaccharidosis or MPS type 2, is a rare genetic disorder that affects males almost exclusively. It is estimated to occur in about one in every 162,000 births. Mm. It's a serious and progressive condition for which we currently have no cure. And let's talk about, doctor, the physical symptoms that maybe a parent notices. When do they become noticeable? What happens? Typically, a baby with Hunter's syndrome appears healthy at birth, okay. but then at some point in the early years of life, symptoms begin to develop in multiple organ systems. There can be recurrent respiratory and ear infections. We see changes in the facial features called coarsening, resulting in thick lips, broad nose, large mm. tongue. We also see an enlarged abdomen from enlargement of the liver and spleen. There can be chronic or recurrent diarrhea. Hernias are quite common, and we see progressive symptoms in the skeleton and in the joints, particularly progressive stiffness of the joints. Dr. Moulter, I want, to, I want to bring you into the conversation, and I do want our viewers to know that you are a otolaryngologist, which is also known as an ENT specialist, ear, nose, throat. Um, do you see any common threads between, let's say, a baby that's born healthy, and then obviously then symptoms occur, common threads between both? Certainly. Well, as an ear, nose, and throat specialist, we see things ear, nose, throat, and dental. And so often this begins with a course of recurring ear infections, mm -hmm. which may lead to placement of tubes, sinus infections, upper respiratory infections, and changes in the facial features. We may see coarsening of the tongue, enlargements of the tonsils or adenoids, and may see some changes in the teeth, which are often described as being peg-like. These symptoms by themselves are, are certainly not a red flag and are, are common experiences okay. with childhood. It's when they're associated with other findings, mm -hmm. um, such as uh, a hernia or okay. the coarsening of the facial features that should begin to raise a, a red flag for hunters. Dr. Burton? Exactly. I think when you see multiple medical issues in the same child, that's when you want to see if there's a common thread or diagnosis that would explain all of those. And so a pediatrician or an ENT doctor might get suspicious. And then a specialist like myself, a geneticist, can recognize the combination, order the appropriate diagnostic tests, and make a diagnosis. And Dr. Moulter, for parents out there who may be experiencing this, they don't know what's going on, they're going from doctor to doctor, it can be extremely frustrating, it is their child, uh, what would you say in terms of maybe educating them and helping them so they can find the answers they need? Well, it, it certainly is challenging. It's when you find that you're reaching challenges outside of the norm that referral to a geneticist would be appropriate. All right, Dr. Moulter, I know you have to get going. Dr. Burton, you're going to stick around because thank you so much, Dr. Moulter, for being here this morning.